Hello Scratch Online users, my name is Hexagonal and we're going to be looking at version 1.43 which just released um, just today, I'm not sure when I'm releasing this video. Um, there's a lot of changes in this one, as you can see by this changelog list, there's a, there's a lot. Now if you've been subscribed to the Scratch Outlines channel, which you should be, you might have noticed that we didn't make a video for version 1.42. I want to say it's because it was such a small update, but in reality, I was just busy in real life. That's why I'm quickly going to go over these changes in 1.42 first, and then I'm going to go over to 1.43. Version 1.42 added a new add-on called FPS Counter. This adds an FPS counter to the top of the screen that shows the current FPS of the project, which is usually around 30. This add-on is best paired with the debugger add-on, which adds a performance graph, which shows your FPS values over the past 20 seconds. This add-on also supports the higher frame rate project mode add-on. As you can see, it's going up to 60 FPS. The new instant forum red indicators add-on, wow, that's a mouthful, will make it so that if you click onto a forum page and then click the back button, and then it'll mark it as red. As you can see, there's no longer a dot. Previously, you had to refresh this page in order for it to update. I'm gonna rapid fire go through these next few changes. On the Scratch add-on settings page, you can now search for settings inside add-ons. The Scratch 3.0 to 2.0 add-on now correctly formats studio invites on the messages page. The save blocks as image add-on now has an improved pop-up design. And there were these bug fixes. All right, now I'm gonna show the changes in 1.43. And looks like we have a lot of changes, so I'm gonna do this really quickly. First change is a new add-on called the Enhanced Cleanup Tool. This actually used to be part of the Developer's Tools add-ons, but it was moved into its own add-on. This add-on works pretty much the exact same as before. You can right-click and clean up, and it'll sort your scripts into a grid instead of a list, like Vanilla Scratch. It also has this toggleable option now. It always used to be on, so you couldn't turn it off. What this basically lets you do is, whenever you clean up, it'll detect if you have an orphaned reporter block, like this over here, and it'll let you delete it. And it'll also detect unused local variables, which are basically variables that are for the sprite only and aren't used anywhere in the sprite. So you can see I have this unused local variable. If I let it delete it, poof. If you used to find that functionality a little bit annoying, well, now you have an option to turn it off in the settings. The arrow key incrementation add-on now supports more input fields. Notably, it supports the inputs in the color picker when using the number inputs in the color picker add-on. You can see I can change it using my keyboard arrow keys. And it also supports the onion skinner add-on. You can see I can change these inputs using my arrow keys. The costume editor keyboard shortcuts add-on now lets you switch costumes using control left or control right. This used to be in the developer tools add-on. You can see if I do control right arrow, I can change my costume to the next one. Or I can do control left arrow to go to the previous costume. Not a new feature, it's just been moved to a different add-on. The hide delete button add-on now lets you hold shift in order to show the delete button. So if I hold shift, you can see the delete button, which is normally hidden because of the add-on, now appears. This works for the costume editor, sprites, and sounds. In the jump to custom block definition add-on, you can now right click a custom block, click go to definition, and it will take you to the custom block implementation. Previously, you could only middle click it, or shift click it, which those functionalities still exist. But now you have an option in the context menu called go to definition. The move sprite to front layer add-on is also now accessible with the right click menu. As you can see that brought the cat in front of the apple and all I had to do was right click it. The sprite folders add-on now has an option in the right click menu. If you right click it, there's an option to delete all of the sprites in the folder. And it even gives you a confirmation so you don't accidentally do that. And you can undo it by going to the edit tab up here and clicking restore sprites. The forum post cooldown display add-on is now more accurate and it has an option to retry sending the message after the countdown. As you can see if I make a post and I try to reply to it, it gives me a cooldown. There's also an option here to post after the cooldown. So if I let the countdown go all the way to zero... Then if you refresh the page it'll show that you sent the message. Oh my god, what is this signature? Learning HTML and CSS? I did that, like, <laughs> wow, that was like years ago. Yeah, as you can tell by my eight posts, I don't use the forums very often. <laughs> the shared slash edited dates tooltip add-on has been renamed to the additional project dates add-on because they added the project creation date to the tooltip and they don't really want to call it the shared slash edited slash created <laughs> tooltip. Anyways, here's what it looks like. There's no change functionality-wise except for the new line there that says 
when the project was created. The Scratch add-on settings page also received a bunch of new features. For example, there's now a well, this one doesn't have any. <laughs> there's also this one doesn't have any either. This one. There's also now a related add-ons feature. It'll tell you for some add-ons, some add-ons that are similar to it. Like for example, the Scratch 3.0 to the 2.0 add-on. There's also the Scratch 2.0 to 3.0 add-on. And if you click on it, it'll then show you a list of all the related add-ons. Then you can click this back button to go back to the main page. As you can see, some of the smaller add-ons don't have that, but some of the larger add-ons like this one have related add-ons. You can also now export and input settings per add-on. There's this drop down right next to the enable toggle. You can click export settings and it'll export a JSON file, which as you can see is a JSON file with just the settings for that one add-on that I exported. And you can edit it here and you can input the settings using this option here. And you can see it even turned on the toggle, just how I edited it in the JSON file. The settings page also has settings previews for more add-ons, notably the dark mode add-on, the compact messages add-on, the stage monitor add-on, and the workspace dots add-on. Let me show that in the settings page. So you have the website dark mode add-on, there's the compact messages add-on, here's the preview for that, and you can see that you can customize all the options, and it updates you. There's the stage monitor add-on, which is this one. And there's also the workspace dots, also known as customizable code editor grid. It's a little bit hard to see because I'm in dark mode, but you can see if I change the grid cell, it gives you this nice preview. So that should help make things more clear for users who don't know what these add-ons do. Also, the settings page should look better on mobile. You can see there's this hamburger menu and you can switch between pages pretty well. There's not that many of you guys who use Scratch add-ons on mobile because you can really only use it on the Kiwi browser for Android, I believe. I don't even know if there's a way to do it for iPhone. But yeah, for those of you who do use it on mobile, well, there you go. It looks better now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to quickly go over a few small changes and bug fixes. Normally, if you have a project with a really long title, it'll get cut off at the end. With the full areas add-on, there's a new setting called Project Titles, which means you can now scroll if the title is too long. The Scratch 3.0 to 2.0 add-on now has a new option called Separator Lines and Navigation Bar. When it's off, the navigation bar looks like this, but when it's on, you can see it has these little separator lines here. Also, the remix button is orange now instead of green like it was before. The Scratch Messaging add-on also has these two new features. Uh, I don't really know how to demonstrate them, so I mean, you can read them. If you know what they mean, great. If you don't, welcome to the club. <laughs> and there's also these bug fixes. If any of them apply to you, or if you just want to pause the video and look at them, feel free to go ahead and do that. Anyways, that's all the new changes in Sketch Add-ons 1.43. Um, oh man, it's been a while since I've done one of these, so I don't really know what to say for the outro. Um, if you've watched the previous videos, you might have realized my mic was pretty bad, but now it should sound good because I got a new mic, so yay! <laughs> also, I tried to go through the add-ons in this video a bit faster because of how many there were, and I wanted to cover the 1.42 stuff, which I didn't cover in the previous well, I didn't cover at all because there was no previous video. Because I was busy in real life. Anyways, yeah, I've been Hexagonal. I will see you next time for a version, whatever the next version is, if I ever make a video for that. I'll try to be more consistent, I promise. <laughs> I've got to edit all this. I wonder if there's anything else I need.